we need to talk. So far in these political ideas videos, we've been far too positive, far too optimistic, far too ideal, some might say. Because now it is time for us to look at perhaps one of the most grumpy, negative, perhaps miserable, or maybe just realistic and pragmatic individuals in all of ideological history. We are talking, of course, about Thomas Hobbes. And in this video, we'll be looking at conservatism, Thomas Hobbes, and his attitudes towards human nature, and therefore what he believes the role of the state needs to be. So let's get learning. Here he is. There's the beautiful man himself. Let me tell you a little bit about him, because it's always so important to think of the thinker in the context of when they were living. And that was important with our liberal thinkers when they're talking, when they're living at various um, er, uh, parts of the Industrial Revolution. And it's important when we're looking at socialists uh, and the third way socialists in the future. But context is so, so important, which is a point I'm going to make repeatedly throughout this series of videos. And there he is, Thomas Hobbes. He's born in 1588 and he is an Oxford graduate, so we can assume that he is a clever, clever man. But in 1640, he runs to Paris. Now, if you know your uh, 17th century history, you'll know that what's going on here in Britain at this time is the Cavaliers versus Roundheads, the, the British Civil War. And there is a huge debate in the country at that time, or war, if you want to go, uh, be, go more um, blunt about it, over whether Britain should have a monarchy whether the ruling classes should be replaced by a kind of a parliamentary democracy. And you'll probably know that this leads to um, Oliver Cromwell um, for a number of years before the monarchy is, is restored um, afterwards. And so Hobbes flees to Paris because he can see this civil war coming and he can see the attitudes towards the monarchy. And Hobbes is a monarchist. And his book, his famous book, Leviathan, which you can see the cover of behind me, um, is all about how society needs a monarchy, a figurehead, an, an autocratic authoritarian figure to kind of keep society stable. So that provides us the context to what, we're, what he is seeing, what he is thinking, what he's feeling, and perhaps allows us to kind of empathize and sympathize with, he can see a country that is about to kind of tear itself apart um, in war, and why he so passionately feels that it needs a that society needs this needs to have a a ruler. So let's go into a bit more detail on Mr. Hobbes, and then we'll look after that. We'll then kind of summarise it by looking at the views of human nature. Hobbes believes that human beings are ultimately self-interested. We are out for ourselves. We are selfish. We we. Um, we are in a state of competition with other human beings around us. We're looking out for ourselves and our families, and that might be as far as it goes. Now, in many ways, when you, can't, when you, when you first start to learn about Hobbes, it makes him seem so negative, especially when you compare him to the liberals. And the liberals are also kind of like, oh, we believe in freedom. We believe in rationality. You know, you can improve yourself, you know, be the best version of you you can possibly be. Or Rawls talking about, you know, let's empathize with each other. Let's develop each other. And then you get Hobbes. Who, who actually lives before them, Let, let's just put the kind of the, um, the context here, um, and he suddenly seems very kind of old and grumpy. But is he right? Is he right? Are the liberals right? Are the conservatives right? Where do you stand on this debate on human nature? He is arguing that ultimately human beings are self-interested, selfish, looking out for themselves, and we live in a condition of war against everyone. Now he doesn't necessarily mean a a literal war, but he also but he does mean that we are in competition um with other people. Um and and of course remember the context of what he is seeing at the time there is literally a war brewing in the country which he is uh, of which he is a member. And therefore he argues that the government, the necessary government prevents this state of war it is the barrier it is the block it is the uh, i don't know what a good what a good phrase would be but it, it is the here is the war coming and it is only the government that is able to get in the way of it to prevent this state of war just kind of spilling out into into anarchy and therefore it is necessary it is important and therefore human beings must surrender their freedom for safety now you, you might get a bit of a kind of like a hang on a minute isn't that what 
what liberals were saying when, when it comes to things like the state being a necessary evil. And yes, there is an overlap, a surprising overlap, between some of Hobbes's ideas and some of John Locke's ideas. When, when, they, when Locke kind of talks about, well, we do need a state to provide security, Hobbes is essentially making the same point. The difference between them is almost where their starting point in what they believe about human nature and freedom. Like Hobbes, uh, Locke believes that we should be as free as possible and that we, we are rational, we are capable of making our own decisions. Whereas Hobbes comes at it from this more negative point of view of, no, we need a government because we're not necessarily capable of our making our own decisions. So it's, it's one of those cases where two people kind of end up at the same um, pub, even though they left um, two different houses um, to get there. And he believes, Hobbes believes, in an authoritative government. This ain't no democracy. And this is why he is very much more of a fan of, of monarchies, um, um, established dynasties over time. Uh, if you just Google Thomas Hobbes and read like the first like kind of paragraph on Wikipedia, you'll get this kind of summary of what he says. And um, if you're one of my students and you're working through um, Nearpod, you might find I've, I've got a video on the next slide that, that, show, that gives a little kind of animated... Uh, summary of his views on, on monarchy and things like that but just like Locke he believes in this social contract that we surrender certain freedoms in order to be provided for the state to provide us with certain um, protections and safety however there's nothing here about rights so there are this is not the same this is not the same. um he argues also that this social contract, or indeed all, all contracts, needs to be enforced, probably with force. He says, covenants without swords are but words. A covenant is a, a two-way promise. Um, so if I say to you, I, I promise to mark your essays, um, that's a one-way promise. You know, you don't have to do anything for me to mark your essays. Um, but if the... But a covenant is a two-way promise. So I will mark your essays if you pay me whatever, whatever it might be, you know, a financial kind of contract. And so what he is arguing here and pointing out is that a covenant, like the social contract, or indeed like just living in society, unless it is, it is backed up with swords, force, military, police, it's, it's words, it's empty, it's meaningless. So we're getting here the idea that Hobbes believes that this authoritative, authoritative government will be imposed. It will be not we're necessarily with the citizen's consent, very different from Locke, and, but he, it is here to kind of ensure stability. And here we come to Hobbes's most famous quote. Um, if, you, if you go on to study any kind of philosophy or um, at university or, or kind of look at the famous thinkers, this is often the quote that is most attributed to Hobbes, which is, life is nasty, brutish, and short. You and me as human beings in our natural state, we would be living in a state of constant war and competition with one another, which would ultimately lead to one of us um, perhaps attacking the other or exploiting the other or using the other. And therefore life is nasty. Brutish, meaning kind of like thug, like hard and short, because at some point someone will get the better of you. And therefore, if, if, um, if we talk about, again, Locke and Hobbes here, Locke believes that before the state kind of came along, there was a free society where people were broadly supportive of one another. They, they are, they're kind of, there's quite a few philosophers that, have the, that talk about this idea of, of life before the state. Like, what, what was the original human being society like before kind of countries and states and governments kind of got in the way? Locke sees that kind of original state of humanity as positive. But Hobbes sees that original state of humanity as horrible, nasty, brutish, and short. So he sees the state as the savior of humanity, whereas Locke sees the state as the oppressor of humanity. Two very different views on perhaps the same thing. And so to kind of summarize how he gets from his views on human nature to his views on the state, he says we need an autocratic government. That means uh, one which is able to just kind of tell you what to do. Um, Google it if you want a kind of more full definition. Or conflict will ensue. Or conflict will ensue. And so that you think about where the context in which he's living, the, the, the British Civil War is about to happen. He's arguing very much that unless the government stamps down on this, there will be a civil war. And of course, when he was living 
there was. Um, so there's Hobbes. So let's summarize that now by looking at the early traditional conservative view on human nature. We can probably do this slide almost kind of by thinking through kind of Hobbes's view because Hobbes doesn't necessarily give us huge amounts of detail about how society, state, economy, especially economy, you know, should be. He's far more interested in kind of talking to us about us and therefore what we need in terms of a government. We are morally imperfect, selfish creatures. Do you agree? He also argues that, or, or conservatives argue, that human beings rely on tradition for our culture and identity. This slide, by the way, is not just the idea of, of Hobbes. This is more of a general kind of conservative slide. Um, but they, conservatives often argue that, that tradition in our society is very important for our human nature because it helps to kind of give us our culture, it helps to give us our identity, and tradition is one of the core ideas of conservatism, which you saw in the, the previous video. Our human nature cannot be improved, which is very different from liberals, and therefore authority, autocratic, authoritative, is required to keep us in check to uh, keep that stability or as the previous quote said conflict will ensue however one of the things you will see over the coming videos over the over the next um few weeks is that there is a big schism within schism 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 split let's go with split within conservatism between traditional forms and and one nation and modern forms of conservatism known as the new right and we'll we'll look at this in in a, in a future video but there is, uh, any time on these slides you see NL, that stands for neoliberal, or maybe I should put NR for new right, but there is this more modern thatcheristic view of conservatism that, is at, that actually has very, very different attitudes. And so whereas all the traditional conservatives have this very sceptical view of human nature, some modern conservatives, new right thinkers say, actually, no, we are capable of rational thought and we aren't imperfect. We, are, we just need. Um, are, we need to be developed. But we will talk more about those later. For now, let's focus on this top idea and the ideas of Hobbes. Okay, so make some notes. Um, now go review your notes um, or um, go to your textbook. Um, there'll be some, if, you, if, one, if you're one of my students, there'll be some um, textbook references on the next slide. And um, go and do some flashcards, revise it, and you'll get, get, it, get it in your head before you move on to the next section. Thank you for watching. If you liked it, then don't forget to like it and um, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you on the next one.